Hi there. In my previous video, I gave you a teaser of IBM's AI-infused catalog called IBM Watson Knowledge Catalog. In today's session, I'm going to demonstrate how a data steward can go and create a taxonomy and build a business glossary using IBM Watson Knowledge Catalog. So let's dive into the platform. I've logged into IBM's Watson Knowledge Catalog uh, using uh, our enterprise insights platform called Cloud Pack for Data. When you come into the home screen of Cloud Pack for Data, you can have different uh, options uh, such as uh, your quick navigation links to different uh, menus in Cloud Pack for Data. You have uh, various cards that you can personalize uh, so that you can have a shortcuts to different options and capabilities inside uh, Cloud Pack for Data. All these cards uh, you can see here are customizable. Uh, so you can have your own uh, cards create or customize these cards uh, and make it a personalized uh, dashboard uh, when you come and log in. Now IBM's Cloud Pack for Data is an enterprise insights platform built on a cloud native architecture. Uh, that means it's all based on microservices and containers. And you can deploy various services uh, using Cloud Pack for Data. Uh, and uh, you can look at uh, what services are installed and available to you inside Cloud Pack for Data. So when it says enable with a green tick, that means the service is installed and is ready for use uh, by the end users. Uh, so you can see there are different services. Uh, all uh, data and AI capabilities that IBM provide uh, can be deployed using Cloud Pack for Data. Now, in today's session, we are going to talk about data governance. So if I go and click on data governance, uh, we can see different services, uh, but the service that we are going to focus today is IBM's Watson Knowledge Catalog. And this is a service to really organize your data, uh, trust your data and provide self-service access uh, to your trusted uh, data. Uh, in today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how a data steward can start creating a business glossary uh, using IBM Watson Knowledge Catalog. So to start creating a glossary, uh, a data steward will go into a menu uh, under governance. Uh, there are different options and capabilities inside Watson Knowledge Catalog. The first thing that a data steward will do is start creating categories and subcategories. Now, when you think of categories, think of how your business users or end users are going to search for the assets in your organization. Are they going to search using departments and sub departments? Are they going to search using products? Are they going to search using logical uh, uh, you know, definitions that are provided in your logical and physical models? So what's the best way to categorize your glossary? And, and that's what you need to ask yourself uh, when you start creating categories and subcategories. Uh, you can use the UI, uh, our graphical user interface, to create a new category. Or if you already have categories in a XML file, you can import that uh, using the import from file option. Now I've gone ahead and created a category called finance. And this is a category which I'll be using uh, for my demonstrations uh, uh, for, for what's a knowledge catalog. When you create a category, obviously you can have categories and subcategories. You can see the category tree on the left hand side. Uh, but th the first thing that you will do after creating a category is provide access control. Who are the users? Uh, who can edit, uh, who can administer the categories and the subcategories inside this finance category. Uh, and then who are the users who can view uh, that category. So these are different roles uh, you can assign uh, to the users. Uh, you can have uh, different uh, roles assigned to the groups uh, and, and that, that can be uh, then linked to a category. Once you have uh, created a category, then you can start creating subcategories. Uh, so you have a hierarchical structure that you have defined, uh, you'll start defining inside this, uh, or you can start assigning any governance artifacts that you have created, created uh, for this category. Uh, that's the first step. So once you've created the categories, then you can start building the business terminology and business definitions uh, for your organization. To define the business terms, you click on business terms, and again, you have uh, two options. You can either uh, import the business terms if you already have it in an XML file uh, or a CSV file, or you can create your own business terms uh, using a graphical uh, user interface. Now, I've created multiple business terms uh, using uh, graphical 
user interface uh, and I'll just show one of the business terms so if you uh, search on if I search on customer customer identifier is one of the business terms I've given a description uh, to the customer identifier the, the category which it is assigned to I've uh, linked other uh, business terms to this uh, particular term so I can show what is the relationship between different assets uh, I have assigned a data steward uh, so the end users know whom to contact uh, if they want more information uh, start dates and effective dates uh, different tags uh, I can create uh, tags uh, so that it's easier to search for particular information in your glossary uh, in this instance I have created a tag called PRI and assign this tag to this business term so if I want to search all the assets which has got PRI information I can go and uh, search for PII tag and it will give me the list of all the assets with PII information. So it's just a very easy way of uh, labeling your assets and searching uh, your assets. Uh, now when you create business terms or any other governance artifacts, there's a workflow associated with it and I'll, I'll talk about the workflow uh, subsequently. Uh, but what it does is it creates an asset in a draft mode. Uh, you then uh, once you have uh, filled in all the details, you can then send it for approval and based on what template uh, workflow template you use uh, you can either uh, take it to two approvers uh, have them review and approve and then go to the publish or go straight to the publish uh, and it depends on the workflow that you have enabled uh, and once it's published like you can see here the status is published uh, you know that this asset is uh, now searchable uh, by the end users uh, or the users of this catalog so this is where you will uh, create your business terms. Uh, you have then classifications. Uh, classifications are again similar to tags. It's a different way to label your data. Uh, you can create your own classifications like PRI classification, confidential data and so on and, and then assign those to the governance artifacts. Data classes is really your domain values uh, in your columns. Uh, we ship 100 plus data classes with the product so you can reuse those data classes uh, that we have or you can create your own uh, data class so in this instance I've created my own data class called customer identifier and if you click on the customer identifier data class again you have a description category where it's linked to uh, your matching uh, method and then the uh, details of how it's matched and you can see that there are different matching methods that you can use uh, you can either match it to a list of valid values that you can provide match it to reference data you can have a reference data uh, linked uh, to this data class uh, you can have a regex or you can have other matching criteria such as column name matching and so on uh, so you provide that uh, details again on the right hand side you can see uh, who is a steward effective date uh, so start date end date uh, and then uh, who created and who has modified this so that is your data classes uh, you can also have your reference data. Uh, we provide a full reference data management capability uh, with the platform. You can have hierarchies of uh, reference data. You can uh, create a reference data with multiple uh, levels. Uh, you have codes and description and then obviously link this reference data uh, to your data classes. So it's uh, really good for uh, your data quality and it's helpful to get a good uh, data quality. So that's your reference data. Then you can uh, create your policies. Uh, so policies, uh, English definition, plain English definition of your governance policies. Uh, you can have a hierarchy of your policies. So you can have policies, uh, sub policies, and then again, uh, create that hierarchy here, uh, just to document, make sure that you're documenting all your policies uh, in a centralized catalog, again, searchable uh, to the end users. So in this instance, I have a, a policy called uh, validate customer data or validate uh, reference data and then you can have sub policies inside uh, the policy uh, and then you can link the sub policies to governance rules uh, which can be then linked to a technical rule so you know how the policies are implemented in your organization. You have uh, multiple rules that you can create or uh, you can either create a data governance rule uh, or a data protection rule. So data protection rule is about uh, real-time masking. Uh, we can provide real-time masking and uh, have a rule so that uh, the sensitive data or PI data is masked to the users who don't have clearance. 
or you can have a governance rule which is an english uh, definition of uh, what a rule uh, uh, what rules you want to create what uh, policies you want to enforce uh, using these rules uh, in an organization so that's your uh, really the assets that you uh, link the, uh, uh, or you create uh, for your catalog uh, once you have these assets and which are linked uh, to each other uh, then you'll have a centralized catalog uh, for the end users to go and access it now all this is obviously done using workflow uh, which i uh, mentioned about it uh, a short while ago and we do ship different workflow templates uh, with the uh, product so when you're going into the governance uh, workflow you can see uh, we have got uh, four templates uh, so you can choose between these four templates and then each template is customizable so you can choose who are the users who can approve who are the group of users who can approve publish uh, and review your uh, governance artifacts so that's it uh, guys that's the demonstration of your data cataloging capabilities uh, in IBM's Watson Knowledge Catalog and your data steward uh, will be using this to create a centralized catalog.